In this video, we'll be talking about the BOC2 algorithm. The BOC2 algorithm is another approach to obstacle avoidance. So instead of encircling the entire obstacle, the BOC2 algorithm tries to only encircle the part that it needs to in order to continue towards the goal. But as we saw with the BOC0 algorithm, uh, or the naive BOC algorithm, uh, you can't just go towards the goal because you can get caught in these local minima or uh, capture points, uh, as we can call them. So instead, the BOC2 algorithm defines an M-line, the direct line between the goal and the start position. And then it encircles every obstacle until it hits the M-line and continues along that one. As you will see, this seems to be a good way of doing things and it will make the robot get to the goal faster. But in the case of very complex obstacles, this is actually not as efficient as, we, as with the BOC1. This is the algorithm for BOC2. As you can see, it looks very similar to the BOC1, but the main difference is the M-line. Whenever the robot is moving around the obstacle and it re-encounters the M-line, it immediately creates the point, the lead point, and goes, to, goes towards the goal again. In this illustration, I've left out the details about when the robot should be cancelling its mission if there's no way towards the goal. So how does it actually look? The robot starts on the left at the queue start position. Then it plots an M-line towards the goal. This is the main difference between the BOC1 and the BOC2 algorithm. Then it goes towards the goal and creates a hit point when it hits the obstacle. It follows the boundary until it reaches the M-line. It then immediately creates a leap point, and from that leap point, it goes towards the goal. There's an extension to the bug one and bug two algorithms, and that's called the tangent bug. The tangent bug, other than having a sensor ring that can measure when a robot hits something, it has a range scanner. Usually in real robots, that would be a LiDAR that can measure the distance to everything around the ro robot. So the tangent bug, instead of just measuring when it hits an object, it can now measure the uh, exit points around an obstacle. So when I see an obstacle around, in front of me, I can see, okay, the obstacle uh, has these bounds. So I, instead of going directly to the obstacle, I'll go to, to the bound. That's why it's called the tangent. So that's the tangent of the, uh, of the obstacles. The tangent bug uses the LiDAR in order to sense the tangents of, of the obstacles. It then chooses a tangent and goes directly towards that. When it gets to the point of the obstacle, it follows the boundary until it sees another tangent here. It then follows that tangent until it can see the goal and it goes towards that. All of the three algorithms we've been discussing here require perfect localization. In outdoor robotics, you can get a perfect localization from GPS signals, but in indoor robotics, it's harder to get that perfect X and Y position. However, all these algorithms highlight some of the particularities of motion planning in robotics. And in the next video, we'll be comparing the algorithms.